Howdy folks, Doc here with Last Best Tool. And the Humble Impact Swivel Socket probably has the most mosts attached to it. Might be the most handy, the most used, the most essential. Uh, certainly <laughs> most expensive. Uh, it can also be the most fragile, the most dangerous. Um, I'm going to add one more most. How about the most misunderstood? Uh, these impact sockets, I've got the snap-on one here, um, are amazing. However, they're using a ball joint, and we know from joints that there are all kinds of different joints, and nature has been working on this design for millions of years, and it's still in need of some uh, assistance. So I, this, I don't consider this a perfect design. It's just a really useful design. Basically, one of these has just a couple of parts. It's got, you know, the, the tool side, which is where the anvil goes. Uh, then it has a spring underneath the ball, and then the ball is connected, obviously, to the fastener side. And then holding it all together is a pin, in this case. And the pin just drives straight across the diameter uh, of the tool side part. And then you can probably barely see it in here. I've got to get the light right. Where's the pin? Um, there is a little circle which actually shows right there. You can see, maybe I'll get my... Right here, there's kind of this little circle right there. What you're looking at is where the pin is laser welded to essentially the, the frame of the socket, and that's what holds this whole thing together. Um, obviously, you can squeeze them down. You can see I can push that down and then wobble it around. Um, the spring holds it in position. Now, if you don't do a pin, you've got a couple of choices. You can do something that's pretty much like a wobble extension, and that wobble extension then just has some sort of captive uh, device or cover over it to hold the whole thing together. But as you can see, gravity has a big effect on this thing, whereas this I can easily adjust for a better connection. Um, another way might be working with a U-joint. That's more for the chrome stuff. Um, remember, if you're using an impact, technically, like if I run it on this big Milwaukee, this Milwaukee maxes out at about 2,100 blows per minute. That's 35 blows a second, which is about three times faster than a machine gun. So I'm just to put that into perspective. Of course, it depends on your machine gun, but anyway, where I'm going with this is has to do with the stress of this design. Now, there are, are um, collared designs that retain that pin and the uh, laser welded ones. The collared designs uh, have some critics in that you can break these collars or the collar really uh, adds a lot of uh, girth to the uh, impact that creates some issues. Um, let me handle this while we're here. Sometimes it's like, why don't I have do I get deep sockets in deep swivels or do I get shallow? I mean, what's the benefit of, of the other? Well, one is generally, if you need a deep, you probably have clearance. If you have clearance, you can probably throw it onto some sort of a, um, a swivel, an impact swivel. Um, I won't even get into the chromes versus impacts. You can uh, look for that uh, elsewhere, but that's, that's a whole other thing with the metallurgy. But anyway, um, or I can get a swivel extension and then throw it on whatever I wanted. Um, so generally the shallows here are probably the most useful because you're already losing um, some clearance by the length of this thing that if you have a deep, you might as well just get a deep with, a, um, with an extension. Now, where am I going with this? Um, well, this design with the pins that are laser welded to the edge, you can see, I can see that circle barely. Very good design right there. There's the circle. Um, there's a problem. You're putting essentially the 360 degrees worth of force, you know, when you're grabbing a fastener, hopefully you're knocking, a, you're knocking on the edge of each one of these corners. Um, and that's, that spreads out the force. However, it's all transferred to where this pin contacts the, um, the walls of the tool side of the socket. So all the force is right there. Well, I was playing around with a design trying to figure out what's going on, so I made this. It took me a long time. Basically, I had to use a snap-on awl here and punch a hole through and thread a rod. There we go. But now what I can do is try to envision what's happening as that force is transferred. 
um, versus, you know, if I just grab this and spin it, that's what that looks like. If I go to this end and I spin it here, you can see there's deformation. You see that? And where is that deformation the strongest? Well, if this, this is, might actually be strong where the pin is, but look right next to it. You see, like right up here. You see that? Well, here's why I was wondering about that. I've got a collared and a um, non-collared or laser welded version. They're both snap-ons. But I, I noticed on this one, do you see that line? That's a bump. I think that is a pre-crack. There's one on this side too. I think that's a deformation in the metal there. And if you look, where is it located? Well, it's located a little bit off. Here's the, here's the line, a little bit off where the pin uh, goes in. In fact, it's outside the circle. If I look and find the circle, point it out here. If I can get the light just right, like here, this is the circle right there. See that? Here's the, cr the pre-crack, or maybe it is a crack on the inside. Uh, I could also guess as to which direction this was used the hardest on. Um, here's another thing. They've done the same up there with that plug versus the old older one. Just had it wide open. You can fill that with gunk and stuff. Um, these are also designed as, uh, if you look, these are, are not balls. They're actually designed to stick into that hole. If I do that, I can grab one here. If I do that, it's locked in, it's not gonna come out. A lot of countries, I guess that's the law. You can't sell a impact ball. Um, you have to have an impact pin like that. Uh, but anyway, going back to this, I think this is what happens right there. And this, if I keep using it, I'm imagining that it may crack somewhere. And if I'm using this at high speed with, say, 2,100 blows a minute, it's not going to be a subtle bend. It's going to be probably catastrophic. And that's what can happen. That's why I say maybe the most dangerous. Um, but I wanted to see where that force is, and that's exactly where you're seeing the flex, because all of this force from using this is right here. And right here. So I've taken 360 degrees and attached it basically to two points. Normally it'd be good. I guess where I'm headed, uh, I think if you're going inexpensive, definitely get a collar because that will hopefully help maintain the roundness of this, keep these pins captive, maybe even allow a better transfer of force because what it's going to do then is this pin is going to transfer the force um, to, to this call or to the outside of the socket, of the drive side socket. And then that is going to transfer, tr or try to deform, but it won't be allowed to deform because the collar is around it. So it's essentially transferring force uh, in its attempt to deform or go out of round to the collar. So Definitely get collars if you're going less expensive. Uh, and then this one, I'm probably going to see, take it to my Snap-on dealer and see, uh, see what he says. But that looks classic to me. I can really feel it. This thing right there, right where you would predict it to be based on my model. Anyway, let me know your experience with these things. Um, the re reason I also say most misunderstood is I, I'm still looking for really good explanations, even from Snap-on Corporate, uh, on some of the design considerations behind this. Um, and also, I want to talk to my Snap-on dealer to see where he sees the most failures in these things. Where is it? I would have thought, thought it was at that joint, but I guess looking at just the massive amount of metal there, maybe on a smaller one? They're all pretty big. Anyway, share your wisdom about these things. I don't want to be mis I don't want it to be misunderstood, but it's definitely something where there is a lot going on. And for an expensive tool that we expect in the future will probably fail anyway, uh, we should be talking about it. So 
with that, dock out.